Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by New Stop It, America's leading spray deodorant. Now with its anti-immunity factor. Poof! There goes perspiration. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, the charming and humorous young gentleman who stars in his own comedy show from New York five nights a week, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you. Good night, boys, and good night, Arlene. <laughs> Just that to say you were paying attention. <laughs> On my left, one of the lovely ladies of radio and television who uh, isn't busy enough right now. She's starting a new one-hour program Wednesday nights on, I believe, another network, Soldier Parade, Arlene Francis. Thank you. And on my left, the president of Random House Publishers during the week and uh, the squire, the enchanting squire of Mont Kisco from Friday till Sunday, <laughs> Mr. Bennett Surf. Right. Very nice to have you back with us, Arlene. We had a pretty cute little girl in that chair last week. You, you know. did indeed, no. and her name is Legion. <laughs> <laughs> well, on my left, uh, we have not only an unexcelled news moderator and panel manipulator, but the slickest card flipper since Gaylord <laughs> Ravenel, Mr. John Sebastian Daly. <laughs> Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. We have a very enthusiastic group with us here in the theater. Enthusiasm is always catching, so we will now enthusiastically present some challenges to our panel so that the challenges can knock the panel for a loop, we hope, and uh, have some fun and carry home a small prize. We'll also have a famous guest challenger a bit later on, but I think it's time for my expert friends over here to meet their first challenger whose job has to be spotted. So would you come in and sign in, please, sir? Harry? Harry Sintron. Is that right, sir? <laughs> I want you to note that Harry has a very firm handwriting and he walked up that board and really punched it. Where are you from, Harry? New York, sir. Oh, you live in New York? Yes, sir. Fine. Well, uh, then you've got a lot of friends around. You have no reason to be nervous at all, do you? Yes, sir. You do have reason to be nervous? <laughs> well, you don't have to be, Harry, because actually uh, they look a little fierce from this distance, but they're all very nice people. Would you walk over there and walk back again, let them get a look at you, please? Uh, sunglasses, Mr. Sandbrenn, or regular ones, Scott? No, uh, they are there. Regular. Yeah. Prescription. How are you, Mr. Sandbrenn? Loosen like up, you. boy. You're going to have fun. <laughs> I've seen my glasses, Mr. Sandbrenn. <laughs> All right, Mr. Syndrome, will you come over here now, please, and sit down next to me, and uh, we'll let the panel have that one free guess they get, they get as to what you may do. And we begin the free guesses with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. I think he plays a musical instrument in a mambo band. Plays a musical instrument in a mambo band, Mr. Allen. I think he's a judo expert. Judo expert, Miss Francis. I think he's a skin diver. <laughs> yes, sir. What? Judging by Mr. Sentron's military bearing, I think he's the head usher at the Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further locket. Look, pardon me, Mr. Sentron. At the same time, we will tell our viewers at home what his line is, but the panel will have to dig. <laughs> All right. Mr. Sentron, you know how we score. This is where I got my reputation as a card flipper. You know how we score this thing. Are you all set to go then? Yes. All right, Mr. Centron is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Mr. Centron? No. That's one down. No wonder he's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mr. Sir. Mr. Centron, I did comment on that erect bearing of yours. Uh, have you ever had any connection with the military? Yes. Are you at present in any way connected with the armed forces? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. So there's a non-profit making organization that you work for 
is something other than any branch of the armed forces. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, do you work for any branch of any government? Yes. Is it something other than the government of the United States? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, do you have anything to do with the law? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Do you wear any kind of a uniform? Yes. Is your job one of protection of any kind? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Sintron, would you have anything to do with diplomatic folk? Diplomatic folk? Yeah, like the UN or something of that sort, vaguely? No. Nothing? No, this no. is not a uh, direct consideration in his employment. I mean, it's, as is true with all of us, we may bump into somebody from the UN or the diplomatic corps, you know? But that makes it six down four to go, Miss Kilgallen. You don't belong to the legislative branch of the government, is that correct? Yes. yes. And you don't belong to the judiciary branch of the government? Yes, yes. Yes, he does not belong to. <laughs> well, then that leaves the executive branch. Are you in any way connected with the executive branch of the government? We'll have a small conference. <laughs> Since it's necessary for this young man to get a weekly stipend, and uh, he <laughs> works for the federal government, he has a connection to the degree that this connection is pertinent with the uh, executive branch of the government. You say you live in New York. Yes. Do you work in New York? Yes. Do you work indoors? Yes. <clears throat> and you wear a uniform. Is it an attractive uniform? Yes. Is it um, utilitarian rather than flashy? Yes. Is it a dark color? Yes. Do you work in or around money as well as for <clears throat> money? No. No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Allen. I think we got you all tied up nicely with this one. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you anything to do, sir, with the post office? No. That makes it eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Do you have anything to do with the... Um, the fire department? No. <laughs> fire department, no. <laughs> and and Nine and down and one to go, Mr. Sir. The last guess, Mr. Centron. I want to make sure you do work for the United States government, the federal government. Yes. You're stationed in New York. Yes. You wear a uniform. Yes. And you work indoors. Yes. Right? Uh, have you anything to do with the tax department? Taxes. <laughs> ah, taxes are always with us, aren't they? What have oh, we yes. left out? But not with him. <laughs> that makes it ten down and no more to go. Now, hang on. Mr. Sintron is an elevator operator in the Statue of Liberty on Bedloe's Island. Good. I must say that all the bear traps in the world were set on really? that one. Panel and uh, yeah. the I Central the City of New York You've got that. The, the full prize and our thanks for having a most interesting occupation. Thanks for coming to see us in What's My Line. It's Thank nice you. to have had you with us. Thank Good night. You. Good to see you. All right, panel, let's see what we can do with another challenger. Would you uh, come in and sign in, please, ma'am? Lillian, Lillian Wool, is that right? And where are you, is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Wool, and where are you right. from, Mrs. Wool? New York. From New York. This is New Yorker night. Hmm? <laughs> well, the panel has to uh, know a little bit about you to be able to take a stab at what you do. So would you be good enough to walk up there and let them see you parade up and down there for me? Hello. All right, Mrs. Wall, over here now, if you will. Make yourself comfortable. Trust you'll be here for some time. And uh, we'll get them that one free guest, I guess, okay? All right, we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's an interior decorator. Interior decorator, Mr. Allen. I think Miss Wall is a holy waller. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Well, it's <laughs> late at night. Miss Francis. I think Miss Wall is probably a carpenter. 
Mr. Sell. I think Mrs. Wowell is all Wowell, but not a mile wide. <laughs> it is late. It is late. No question about that. Nobody has it. We'll let our audience at home have a further look at Mrs. Wowell at the same time. We will tell them what her line is. All right, Mrs. Wowell, you know how we score. No card, we flip card. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Mrs. Wowell is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Do you work for a profit-making organization? No. Uh, just a moment. <laughs> Come in. We've got to have a small conference. She walks up the statue. <laughs> she is the statue of liberty. <laughs> I've discussed this with Mrs. Wall. We noticed that. And now and, you think uh, she's right. <laughs> she's right. That's one down and nine to go. Mr. Allen. Is there a service of any sort connected with your work? Yes, sir. Do the people whom you serve come to you? They do. That has nice rhythm to it. Do the people whom you serve come to you? <laughs> do the people whom you serve come to you? <laughs> it's been very hot all weekend. <laughs> uh, do these people have anything in common? They do. <laughs> Arms, uh, legs, legs, heads. Hmm? Arms, legs, heads, all kinds of things. <laughs> all right. Might I ever come to you? Might. Might it be possible for uh, Dorothy or Arlene to come to you? Yes, sir. Well, let's all go. <laughs> now what I have to figure out is what Arlene and I have in common. <laughs> Whatever it is, I can't see it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, is whatever this thing is that we have in common, is it a happy thing? Uh, does a fella generally take a girl when he comes to avail himself of your services? Uh, does what you do for these people have something, uh, some connection with love or romance or that sort of thing? Why, Steve. <laughs> Let's see. I'm married, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> uh, let me see, then. They come to you. Well, does this have anything to do, then, with uh, marriage or something of that sort? Uh, yes, sir. Hmm. <laughs> do you go offer these people advice? Do you by any chance marry them? I beg your pardon? Do you marry them? No. All of them? Well, she can only marry one man at a time. Good for oh, her. Oh, you mean, oh, yes. Does she perform some sort of a... No. No. Well, I'll see you later then. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> you know, we may get everybody confused with these up, Steve. Two dollars eight to go, Miss Francis. Now, uh, there was such laughter here, I don't quite know whether you said that a man and a woman could come together to see you. Yes. They can. Uh, does your work have any paperwork attached to it? Why would you mean keeping records? Is that what you're having? Well, records, licenses, anything like that. Wrapping garbage, anything. Yeah. <laughs> I would say this, Miss Howell. You might want to, to disagree with me later, but I this certainly is might. not. <laughs> this is not vital to the performance of, of uh, the duties here, so we'll give you a no answer. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Wall, I think it's important for us to discover whether this, these couples come to you before they're married or after they're married. Uh, now, Thank you, I have to take a guess. Uh, I'll probably wrong. Uh, do they come to you after they're married? Yes. They do. Uh, do they come to you because one of the natural results of marriage may be about to occur. By that I mean a, a possible baby of some sort. Is it yes. something to do with that? Uh, do you teach either of them anything about approaching parenthood? Yes, thank you. I think that's it, madam. Mrs. Wall teaches a course for expectant parents, and she works for the Red Cross, and I know what she wants to do with her money, so let's flip a few cards. 
because Mrs. Wool wants the money to go to the Red Cross so that they can buy clothing for the, some of the babies whose parents have not been able to provide all the things that young babies need. So thanks very much for coming to see us. And now we come to the special feature of the program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My colleagues have blindfolds. Are they all in place, panel? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? In the case of our mystery challenger, we dispense with all of the usual preliminary <laughs> questioning get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with, uh, well, better sir. Well, you were obviously whistle bait. Uh, are you uh, in the entertainment business? Some branch of entertainment? Hmm? I hear nothing. He's not here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I didn't hear that. That was a yes, Bennett. Would you like to hear it again? Yes, yes. I would. Would you uh, flack him again? Mm-hmm. Uh, you are masculine, I take it. Mm-hmm. They whistle at you. Uh, <laughs> uh, have you ever been on television? Mm-hmm. Did you ever have a regular program in television? Mm-hmm. Uh, was it a weekly program, or is it a weekly program? Has it ever been a weekly program? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, is it on now? Or did it just go off for the summer? I mean, is it still a current program? Now, wait a minute, let's get this separated. Well, you want I, to ask... I mean, is it a program that is either on now or just suspended for the summer months? Mm -mm. Wait a minute, we've got to have a small conference. <laughs> that would be a no, Bennett. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. What did Bennett get a no to? He got... <laughs> <laughs> Then it asked if this was a program, this television program in question, which uh, was either on now or had been suspended for the summer in the usage and practice of the business to take a summer hiatus. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, it is not on now and... Uh, it is it, not on a summer hiatus. It is, it is on a... It, it is, is not, not, on, not a on a summer hiatus. hiatus. Yeah. Uh, in other words, if... Our star for this evening is seen again on television, on a regular program. It will be a new program. There is no contractual commitment to continue the program beyond the expiry date, which was recent. Thank you. <coughs> uh, are you a performer? Are you a performer? Mm-hmm. Are you uh, funny at times? <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, intentionally? <laughs> mm-hmm. Are you connected with any musical instrument? Mm-hmm. What was that? Mm-hmm. Uh, Well, do you play this instrument? Mm-hmm. Is it one that would be found in a um, symphony orchestra? <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, uh, is yours a solo act? A solo act? Yes. Mm -mm. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Whoever you are, sir, this is your life. <laughs> I
By the last answer to the last question, am I to understand that you have a partner? Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. Is this partner of the female sex? Or is she a woman? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, man. Complete blank here all of a sudden. Oh, dear. I, I'm afraid I'll just have to pass. Arlene, do you have any idea? All right, Miss Francis. Uh, is there is there more than one partner? Is there a group movement of any kind? Mm-hmm. Uh, would you be part of uh, an orchestra of some kind? I don't mean the of some kind unkindly. <laughs> I mean, would you be, you know, famous for an orchestra? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you ever play late at night? Do you ever? Do you ever play late at night? <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Do you ever play on into the hours of the morning on radio? You mean does the performance... I mean, does the orchestra perform late at night and on into the morning? That would be just what we were wanting to find out. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Well, uh, are you the, the head or leader of, of a band? Mm-hmm. The, the band bears your name. Mm-hmm. Well, there was some laughter about the instrument being in a symphony orchestra. I wonder if this is a band that's got a lot of very peculiar <laughs> instruments uh, that are not usually found at Carnegie Hall. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, could you be, be Spike Jones? By any chance? <laughs> I think we have time panel to test you on another challenger. Would you come in and sign in, please, ma'am? <laughs> Isabel Serrano, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Serrano. Well, Mrs. Serrano, we're very short of time. Where are you from? Margate, New Jersey. Margate, New Jersey. Will you look at the panel? Dreadful, isn't it? Come on over here with me. <laughs> and sit you down. And I'll tell you, in your case, I think we'll dispense even with the wild guesses, because I want to see if the panel can get you in about two and a half minutes. We won't have any wise, wild guests tonight, but just to be sure that the people at home do know what it is you do before the panel goes to work, let's let uh, our viewers at home find out what your line is, but then we'll make the panel big. You know how we score this here? All righty, fine. Uh, we will, uh... <laughs> Panel, we've got about two minutes and 20 seconds. We'll tell you that Ms. Serrano is salaried, and we'll begin the general questioning with Steve Allen. Is there a product connected with your work? No. no. One down and nine to go, Ms. Francis. Do you need any particular training for your job? In a way, yes, I would think, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. But it is a service of some kind. Yes. yes. Do people come to you for this service? Yes. Do you work indoors? Sometimes. You can work both indoors and outdoors? Yes. Is it a useful service? I don't want you to be wasting your time. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, it has its uses. <clears throat> <Hey>. <laughs> do you ever touch these people in any yes. way? Uh, do you touch them so that they like it? <laughs> well, I mean, rather than push them around. <laughs> well, I don't think that anybody would have any cause to take objection. I see. Are the, uh, are they humans that you deal with? Yes. Uh, do you in any way manipulate their faces, arms, legs, heads? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. About 40 seconds. Miss Rana, do you manipulate their pocketbooks in any way? That is, do you take money from them, or give them money, or sell them anything? Tickets? Well, there might mean money is involved, Bennett. 
Uh, have you got any? I just this we haven't got much time. I just want to take a wild chance. Have you got anything to do with a racetrack down in New Jersey? Racetrack in New no. Jersey? No. <laughs> no. Let's do that. There's three out and seven to go, Miss Dorothy. Do you give people advice or tell them anything about the future? You mean sort of fortune telling sort of? Sort thing? of, yes. Yeah. Well, it's too bad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Four out and six to go. We run out of time. Actually, we, uh, this is a lot of fun because I don't think Miss Serrano hints at all at what she does. She's a weight getter. <laughs> Guess who's weight? Can you get the full prize? Now I'll have you ready. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> good. We'll be back in just Until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, boys, and good night, Steve. <laughs> good night, Arlene. <laughs> good night, boys. Good night, Bennett. <laughs> Good night, John. I dare you to blow that in front of the television audience. I will. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line? <laughs> this has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. In association with the CBS Television Network.